Tech for Tech, welcome back to my channel, my name is Vitamin Vitamin, I'm going to talk about the Talos Challenge tutorials, that was a really bad button, but this is hopefully going to be at least a good video. So I remember a while back I bought this second hand 177-ish pound Lumix FZ82. It's a super zoom camera, it's a bridge camera, which is something between a compact camera and a DSLR, so you can't take this lens off. Now the fun thing about this camera though is that it's got a 20 to 1200 millimeter equivalent zoom lens. So this 1200 millimeter zooms in like crazy and from the get-go I've wanted to try and shoot a time-lapse where every frame I zoom in a little bit more. Now this is going to look super messy because it's not an accurate zoom lens, it's a cheap camera etc. But in this video I will take you through how I'm shooting it and then also how we're going to stabilize it in After Effects because we will need to stabilize it. What we're shooting today is the BT Tower which I don't know how far away it is but I'll put it on screen, it's pretty far away, and I've tried that out with the FZ, you can get pretty close. So I'm gonna mount it on the window here, I've got one of these things, we're gonna secure it with a strap and a, and a clamp so it doesn't fall, <laughs> fall down and hurt someone, that would be pretty bad. And I've also bought a dummy battery, so there's a cable hanging out here, I bought this on eBay for like 15, 15 pounds or something instead of the normal battery, because this battery, it's good, but it's not great, so I don't wanna run out of battery, so I've just gone with that, so it's just a wall plug now. And then yeah, all that's left is to shoot the photos and zoom in. I won't be shooting with an interval because I don't think that's possible when you're shooting in time-lapse mode to zoom in. So I'm just gonna go by, by the feeling. We're gonna try and get in the zone and yeah, let's go. A couple things, dummy battery cable plugs into the other dummy battery cable, what a surprise. These rings on the front are step-up rings. I bought step-down rings first, which was wrong. <laughs> So step up rings, I mount these using uh, with another filter, which is somewhere over there, uh, so that when I'm shooting those extremely zoomed in sun shots that you may have seen on my Instagram, uh, so I don't fry the sensor pretty much. Now, how are we gonna get this steady? This is like a pretty soft carpet and a tripod just won't work. So I've mounted a Manfrotto super clamp to this wooden uh, windowsill with a ball head, tripod ball head mounted. That's all very secure, but again, you know, we're on a high floor here. I'm also going to clamp this to that. So that should something weird happen, at least it's all tied to this way too heavy now gear trolley. So, boom, just like that. We got this ball head and we can start playing. I'm gonna open the window now. Also, I'm experimenting with vlog. Uh, I was on a picture profile before that either that was blown out or I was way too dark, you know, dynamic range, etc. Maybe some windows. Boom. And now I can simply power on the camera and uh, I'll show you what that looks like. So that's that, and then if we zoom in, and see how close we get. So we've got to fine tune that to hit the center. It's got a marker in the middle of the screen. So for the super zoom, if I start, yeah, if we start like that, and then zoom out, you see how, how that lens moves? <laughs> it's gonna show the window on the first couple shots. That's fine, that's part of it. Um, but yeah, now every step I zoom and take a photo, it should eventually land back in the middle of the BT tower. I assume the lens stays in focus when I uh, zoom in, but maybe I'll have to focus for every shot. Now there's not a lot of clouds behind it, but it'll still be fun. You can see the exposure pumping, which is interesting. Anywho, Give this a shot, shall we? Uh, it's chilly, by the way. <laughs> let's uh, let's get this done. Let's go. Okay, so I'm not going to bother too much with the exposure. We're shooting raw anyway, and we can hopefully fix that in post if it goes wrong. Now, the only other thing you got to do is be consistent. You got to get in the zone. I'm not shooting with an interval. I could have a uh, metronome clicking or something, but we're just going to try and be consistent with it. So, first shot. Here we go. Click. Mini zoom. Ooh, this is gonna take a while. The idea is to just flick the zoom so it zooms the minimal amount. Ooh, that was more.
I can see the shot going up and down per flick. I wonder if I should focus every now and then. Look, it's an experiment and I'm taking you with me. Oh, cold. Oh, that was too far. Shit. Flicks only. It shows it on screen as well. 58, 61, 63, 66, 70. So it's between like 2 and 4 mil. I wonder if there's a digital control for the zoom. I think there might be. Oh my god, these kids are screaming bloody murder. 98 and first 100 mil. 102, 105, 107, 110, 112, 115, 117, 120. The clouds are really fast today, so I can shoot quickly like this because I know they'll move in the shot. If they were like super high altitude, slow moving ones, I'd be going a bit slower. But again, this is a test and I just wanna, oh, too much. I just wanna get one in the bag and see what it looks like. 266. 274, 282, 291. Wow, oh, it's going much faster now. Focus. You can see the exposure going up and down as well, which is interesting. 549. 584, 600, halfway. Oh, that's too much. Luckily, we'll warp stabilize it as well, and hopefully that smooths out the zoom movement. 1000, 1060, 1110, 1182, 1196, 2000. And then we'll fire off a couple of one, a couple of static ones. That's it. Let's have a look. All right. Uh, I've never shot on this setup before. I'm still figuring out the whole office. Uh, I hate the jackets in the back and all that stuff. But um, yeah, for now, this will do. I just wanted to get another video out there. You know what it is. I've still just been shooting a ton of time lapses. First of all, let's make a new project. First of all, no, let's not uh, let's not forget to screen record. Um, Shift Command Five. Record entire screen. Record. This is transferred. We're just going to work with the JPEGs, as I said earlier. Um, there's no real need to shoot or to, to stabilize the RAWs. It just takes much longer. You can stabilize the JPEG sequence and then replace that with the RAW sequence afterwards, which is the whole point of uh, my hyperlapse stabilization, which I should really make a proper course on, I know. Um, try one, let's call it that. In here, we are going to separate the JPEGs. And we're gonna go at, oops, try one JPEG. Drag that in here. New comp. Let that make a preview. And how many are in there? That's 126, so that's five seconds, which is great. Oh, you can see that shakiness. That's cool though. So now it's just generating a, a RAM preview, so it's putting all these preview images uh, at quarter resolution into the, uh, the RAM memory, I guess. Feels like there's some focusing issues there. Also, I shouldn't be wearing these when uh, editing because they're blue light blocking. But I guess if I'm not color grading, it doesn't matter. Okay. So there's our first look. You can definitely see a jump in where the speed of the zoom picks up. But I think once we, um, once we slap a warp stabilizer on there, which we can just do like this, smooth motion. I always set it at 10% to begin with. It's better to have a low percentage of uh, motion smoothness than it is, uh, and do it multiple times than it is to do a 50% in one go, for example. 
Wonder how quick this goes. All right, let's wait for that to finalize and see what it looks like. Okay, warp stabilizer done so. Let's go to the start, hit control zero again, and see what it's done. Warp stabilizer magic, that looks great. If we add a little directional uh, blur. Oh, gotta take one frame out, I think. But yeah, this looks fantastic. I love the way the perspective compresses. Oh, yeah, definitely zoom issues there. So I've got a, uh, sorry, focus issues. Oh, a little warp, a little wobble. Gonna have to manually do that. That's, that looks great. I love that. It's so trippy. Now, I just gotta shoot that for a bunch of uh, buildings here and make one of these transition things. I think that'll be really fun. You know what we could do, alternatively? Should have done that first. Uh, new comp from Selection. And just slap another warp stabilizer on there. Another 10%. And instead of subspace, subspace warp, just position, scale, and rotation, which applies different stabilization method on it. Now we're just going to wait again. As we're waiting on the second warp stabilizer, I just got an email. Hi, Matthew, this is XYZ from XYZ, blah, blah, blah. It's been a while since the last time we contacted. I hope you and yours are doing all well. I followed your Facebook and noticed you have your second baby. Congrats. I didn't know I had a baby, let alone two babies. That's crazy. Honestly, some of these like people reaching out for product reviews and stuff, collaborations where there's literally nothing in it for me, do the worst job at the only thing I'm supposed, I suppose they're supposed to be doing, which is reaching out to people and getting them to work with them. But they're always so shit. Clouds weren't ideal in this shot. I think I might shoot another sideways one. Tip of the shard could be fun. Just the way the clouds are going, because they're coming from the BT tower, there's not much change in it. But if you shoot sideways and shoot, you know, at a 90 degree angle, it'll all look much better. Three, two, one, done. Stabilizing. Save that real quick. Uh, control zero, preview. What also would help um, is just go slower. So click, I mean, flick, zoom, focus, click. Flick, focus, click. Ooh, that's looking much better. That took away that little jump. God, that's trippy. That is very trippy. It really messes with what you're looking at. I think this is great. I'm gonna shoot a bunch of these and just lose my mind. Wow. If this would play full screen, let me run into that real quick. If this would play full screen, um, on a big wall, like a big video installation, and you've had a couple of drinks, you're tripping. All right, let's, my computer is slow. Bit of flickering. Bit of focus issues. I think once I hit the end, I'm gonna um, shoot more frames as well. I think that'll look nice. It's really Impressive how much detail you can still see. Considering this is a 170 pound camera, guys, let's not forget that. They're also sold out now after I made my video. Because I wanted to buy a second one. Because <laughs> sometimes, you know, there's lots of stuff happening. Like a full moon rises at sunset. You want to shoot both? Ideally. Very cool. Okay. <laughs>